Warning. Incoming message. Hello, I'm Jay Andrews with Laguna Tools. Today, we're gonna to cut out a sign and we're gonna do it out of acrylic plastic. Uh, specifically, today we're gonna to use three different colors. We're gonna do one out of uh, blue, green, and white acrylic plastic. And we're gonna cut it today on the Smart Shop 2. We selected the Smart Shop 2 because it's got a great vacuum table and we're gonna use that vacuum fixturing to hold the acrylic down as we're cutting through the plastic. Now, because we're cutting plastic, it's a little bit different uh, type of tooling that we normally use for wood cutting. I'm going to show you a great new app today. Uh, it's an app that's put out by Vortex Tool, and Vortex is one of our tooling suppliers here, and they've got a great app so that we can select the exact bit that we'll need to cut the acrylic. Now, woodworking and sign making, for that matter, has changed nowadays. We've got a great new host of applications and programs that really makes our life a lot easier. Today, we're going to explore a new application here by Vortex Tool, and we'll turn this on right here. We're going to click onto that, and let's have a look at this application to select our tool. So now we've got the application open. Let's go ahead and hit our menu and then go to tool selection. From here, the first thing that we're gonna select is our material and it gives you a range here, aluminum, plastic, hardwoods, and so forth here. We're gonna go through and select hard plastic for our acrylic and then it's gonna ask us the horsepower of the machine. And since we're cutting on the Smart Shop 2, we're gonna select 11 and above for the horsepower and then it'll ask us our tool diameter. And I wanna use a quarter inch tool for the types of tool paths that we'll be doing today. So we'll select quarter inch tooling. It's gonna to ask us our material thickness. The drop down gives us a little bit of a range here, zero to half inch, it's gonna be quarter inch thick material. And then it'll finally ask you the type of cut. And the type of cut they're gonna be doing is a through cut, we're gonna cut through the material. And then we'll look at the recommendation. Now, it gives us two different recommendations here. We'll have a look here at the first one. And I'm looking here, it gives me uh, the recommended RPM of the machines, the number of flutes, and so forth here. And I'm looking at the feed rate. It's a little bit slower than I like, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna look at selection number two. And on selection number two, I like this feed rate uh, a little bit better. Now, the numbers that it gives you here are kind of a baseline number. You always want to uh, back up a little bit and be conservative, and then you can kind of ramp up to these levels here. So I'm gonna use that kind of as a baseline here. I'm gonna select this tool. The tool number here, a 5830, is made for plastic. Let's go grab that tool and put it in the machine. Now, we've used the Vortex app to find this tool here and make sure that we have the uh, correct selection. 5830, and I've gone to my tool bin and I pulled this one. This is a two flute bit with a polished flute on it, so it doesn't want to grab and hold on to the plastics. And this will be perfect for going through and cutting our uh, acrylic material today. Now let's step over, we'll have a look at the uh, software, we'll define our tool paths and come back to the machine and start cutting some plastic. Okay, let me show you what this looks like on the screen. I've done a, uh, a rough drawing here, a little mock-up of what the signs are. We're going to have one of them that is roughly two feet by eight foot long right here. We've got another one here that's about two feet by four feet, and then two smaller ones that are roughly two feet by two feet here uh, as a layout. There's three different colors that we're going to use. The background is defined by the blue line right here, and that'll be a blue background and made out of the uh, blue acrylic plastic. The shamrock will be out of green acrylic plastic, and then the lettering is going to be white, and those are designated uh, in the different colors here. And so what we'll do is we're going to go through and set up tool paths for each of these here. So this is our rough layout of what it's gonna look like. And then what I've done is I've prepared some cut files here that'll show the shamrocks in their own little nest right here. So we've got all four of them done right here. And this will be the green material that we're gonna cut here. The next one here on another sheet here is the lettering that we're gonna do. And then the final one will be the blue background. Now the lettering here, if you look at it, there's a lot of space that is taken up here with the letters all spaced out. And since we're not gonna cut them out as one piece, we're gonna cut them out as individual letters, we can go through and nest those and get higher yield out of our material. So we'll come over here and we're gonna use, we're gonna highlight all of the, uh, the letters. We're gonna use the nesting function here. And we're gonna go through and do a preview. And after it previews, you'll see that we can get a higher yield out of this sheet. And we've got all the letters nested down here. So we can nest them either along the x-axis or we can uh, nest them along the y-axis. 
and see which one is going to give us a better yield. Uh, I like the way that it looks on the other one and we'll get better uh, useful material out of the sheet. So we're going to go back and nest those in this direction. And there we go. So there's our nest right now for the letters. We'll go through and set the toolpath for that. I've already got my toolpath set for the background and for the shamrocks. So we'll save those files. Let's go ahead and put those on our thumb drive and we'll take those out to the CNC machine and we're going to cut three different colors of plastic. Okay, so now we've got our files saved on a USB thumb drive and we're going to put those into the machine. You can also transfer files to the SmartShop 2 via an Ethernet cable or through a wireless network if you're uh, hooked up that way. So today we're going to use this. One quick note of, uh, of warning here or caution, always remember to use your safety glasses when using any kind of power tool and that includes a CNC machine. Even though you're not hands on, you can break a bit during a cutting operation and it can come shooting out. Always use uh, proper eye protection and other protection in your shop. Let's go ahead and load our file. Okay, now that we've got our shamrocks cut out, let's go ahead and lift one out and have a look. It still has the backing paper on here, but you can see that the quality of the cut here is just absolutely fantastic. Those vortex bits really do a super nice job. And you can see how nice the edge is right here. This is going to look great on this sign. Now it's on to the blue backing. We've loaded up our blue sheet here. Let's go ahead and get the file loaded and start cutting this. Boy, another beautiful cut. And we've got our backgrounds done all in blue. We're going to switch the sheet over here to the white. And because we put all the letters at one end here, we've got them all nested down, we're going to focus all the vacuum here to this end of the machine. So I'm going to shut off the back half of the machine. And we've got the front half here gasketed off. And we're going to go ahead and focus the vacuum here. Let's get on to cutting the white letters. Okay, now we've got our white sheet loaded up here. We're going to cut out the letters. And some of these letters are quite small and the parts are, are very, very small. Um, so one of the things that we've done here is we've kind of slowed down the tool paths on them. I've done two passes on some of the very, very small parts so that we can cut almost all the way through. And then we'll come through and just cut that last little onion skin off of there. The other thing you want to uh, do is use as much vacuum as you possibly can. Now we've ported all the vacuum toward the front and we've got it gasketed off. And we went one step further. On this Smart Shop 2, we've got the optional Becker Rotary Vein vacuum pump in use here. And this is not the stock regenerative blower pump, this is an upgraded pump and it provides deeper uh, vacuum and a lot better holding power for these types of parts here. So let's go ahead and get this thing cut. I'll get my glasses on, we'll get the file loaded and ready to go. And we finished cutting all the white letters and you'll notice that there's a few blanks in here, some spots that are uh, missing parts and that's because these parts are so incredibly hard to hold and what we'll see here is that we've got a fantastic quality cut on this letter E and you also notice on the back here we've got some two-sided tape. We went ahead and hedged our bets a little bit on this cut here because 
These parts are so small and even with the best vacuum on it and even with it blocked off here, these are really incredibly hard to hold. And what we found about halfway through was that uh, as the dust collector was going through and vacuuming up the dust, it actually picked up a few pieces here. So we're gonna have to go back and recut a few of those. Anytime that you're cutting small parts, you have to take every opportunity to hold those parts that you can. This is a good area that you might want to use tabbing in. And in the uh, Vetric products, both in VCarve Pro and Aspire, they have the tabbing function, and it works really well for small parts. We were trying to get away today without it, and we had a few casualties. So I'll go back and I'll recut those with tabs. And when you do it with tabs, you'll have to trim the edges or sand them ever so slightly. But boy, these things came out real nice. I'm gonna pick the rest of these out of the table and start laying these out, and we'll get ready for a glue up. There's some uh, special acrylic adhesive that we'll use on this, and we'll go through and assemble the sign next. Doing some final checks here on the layout. I'll make a few reference marks on my tape stripe here. All right, now we've got all the letters put in place and they're all glued down. I'm gonna remove our tape very carefully. After this, we'll let the sign cure up a little bit, let the glue set. And once that's done, I'll come back in here with a little bit of plastic polish just to remove some of the glue residue and just clean it up a little bit. The guys down there at Kelly's Automotive are really going to like this one. Well, we've got our first sign done and it really looks great. The Smart Shop 2 did a great job of cutting all the letters. Now you can do this on a Smart Shop 2. You can even do it on a Smart Shop 1. Uh, since there's no tool change on it, you can do it on one of our Smart Shop MTs also. It's a fantastic project and you can make a, a sign for just about any kind of business you want to. The acrylic can also be used for a wide variety of other types of projects as well. If you'd like more information on the Smart Shop 2 or any of our products, give us a call. You can reach us at 800-234-1976 or go to the website at www.lagunatools.com. Thanks again.